Hello everybody, my name is Juan, welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be taking a look at One Piece, but not the show. I wanted to create a little um, video, uh, a, 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 a tier list of the Marineford characters. I think it would be an interesting thing to do, only to give you a little bit more detail about the specific characters and what it is I think about them, because a lot of the scenarios that went down in Marineford kind of happened really fast. A lot of shit was moving so fast that... There was no real time for me to commentate or be like, oh, that's interesting, or this and that in a lot of situations, um, or at least with the war, you know. And um, I don't think it's necessary, but I think it's interesting, so I think I'm going to be doing that. Let me just set this this up right here, and we'll see how, how we do. Okay, so um, you guys probably know how this works. So this is gonna how it's going to go. We got S tier, um, obviously, for uh, some of the best. A, you know, they're okay. All the way down to D, and D would be like, and no, they're not the best characters. And then M I N stands for more info needed because um for example we've got who is it? Yeah, like for example, like um what's his name? Um Shanks' crew, we've seen them and they look like they're cool. Some of them look like they're kind of intimidating, you know, shit like that, but I don't really know what their powers are. I don't really know what they're capable of to um, be able to assess them at a higher degree. I think I would have to need, need more information. Uh, so I think um, Shanks' crew is going to stay out of this um, tier list for this time being. I think also the Blackbeard Pirates. They We don't really have very much info. I think Blackbeard, we have a lot of information about. I think he's a compelling character of his own regard. Um, but the, the rest of his pirates, they're kind of... We don't really know much about them, to be honest with you. So kind of... Yeah, and you know what? These bitches are really... Yeah, you know... <laughs> um, Lafite. La I think Lafite is kind of cool. Um, you know, he's got the whole Okama aesthetic kind of going on. I think Lafite, he's done enough. I think... Ah, oof. Oof. I, I don't really know what his powers are, though, so... I think B might be too generous. Um... But we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, what is his name? Jesus, Jesus something. Um, okay. Mito-san. <laughs> I forgot her name. Actually, why am I going for her? She's not that important. Um, Helmepo, of course, you already know. D, fuck Helmepo. We don't like Helmepo. Okay, okay, okay. Before I get into this, actually, I should give you some sort of idea as to what it is I'm focusing on. Um, so... Power does play a role into it. I do care about, um, you know, um, characters being powerful. I care about um, indomitable forces. You know, I talk about this constantly about characters who have powers that are so fucking incredible that, like, nobody can fucking do anything to them. That is what an uh, indomitable force are. A lot of those characters, they're going to get placed a little bit higher up. And in some ways, it's almost like competition between the characters for me. Like, sure, some characters, like... I don't know, um, I, I, I'm struggling to find an example, like, fuck, the third Yubito, bro, for the third Yubito, we need to create a new list, a new a actual F, and you already know, the third Yubito, we don't fuck with the third Yubito, bro, they've shown time and time again, due to the fact that they own slaves, to the fact that they have so much money that this money, this power, perceived power, has rotten them to the point that they think it's okay to own slaves. They think it's okay to ride on the back of a slave because touching the ground is too much for them. It's like automatic F. You already know. Um, who else is like a character that we can get out of the way? Like this bitch. Oh, what was the what was their name? What was this character's name? I fucking hate this bitch. Not as bad as a Teryubito for sure, but you know, it's like, uh, it's 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 a Teryubito in the making in some kind of way. It's like. The child of a noble who is being brainwashed into thinking that the way that the world is set up for nobles is correct, which it's, clearly it's not. They're kind of fucked up in so many degrees that it's like, eh. What else? What else? What else? Um, somebody we can get out of the way. This bitch. Maybe I'm being a little cruel by putting her in D, but I feel like she didn't really... She didn't really do anything in the arc. She commentated here and there. She did have, I think, a couple of lines in which she questioned the nature of the Navy as a whole. But, <laughs> you know, she didn't really do much. So it's like, like 
I guess that's another fact factor that I'm considering. Um, cause sure, I feel like I had to say this at the beginning. Um, but this is a lot of it is based on my opinions. Um, I do consider power, like, like I was mentioning, to be an important factor in determining how, like the best characters. You know, cause like if a bitch has no power and anybody can take her out, why the fuck would I put her in S? You know what I mean? Like that's important to me. I think. Um, very strong-minded individuals like that's kind of a weird way to phrase it i feel like uh characters that make ethically correct decisions i think they are more likely to rank higher um that being said this is gonna be a hot take right here a kind of i'm gonna have to give him an a okay but listen 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 Sure, he killed Ace. He is despicable. From that perspective, you can put him in F2. You can destroy the man. Do whatever you want. He's actually only because he killed Ace. He is not an S tier. Other than that, he would be an S tier simply because his power is so fucking OP. This motherfucker went up against literally everybody. Well, not like that. But, you know, like, anybody who does go up against him doesn't really stand a chance. So, ugh, fucking magma powers, bro. I gotta say, that's that's something else. The fact that he was able to burn another Logia user, like, bro, this motherfucker, if he was, I'm actually, you know what, I'm gonna bump him down to B. I, he's just, like, that mentality, that demented mentality of being like, um, um, like, uh, like, he has such a, such a twisted sense of justice that, even B, now I'm like, oh, maybe I should drop him a little lower, you know? But, like, he's so strong that it's, like, I, like, it, it almost doesn't feel correct. Like, this isn't, by any means, a power ranking scale. This is a very personal biased, um, uh, ranking that I'm doing here. But, yeah, you know, Aokiji, if we'll go through the Admiral's S tier. Uh, I think, uh, a nice power is very cool. I also think, in the past, he's done things that make me think that he isn't as demented as a Kai Kanu, if we're gonna use them as a comparison. Um, I think he has potential as a character. I think he has the potential to become, a a a, a, a ethically, uh, a, a good character, if that makes any sense. Like, I think... Of all, the, of all the admirals, I feel like he's the more likely one to um, potentially make a positive change within the Navy so that it changes the way that they function, maybe? And therefore, he gets an S tier, of course. Fucking, this motherfucker, he is so fucking powerful. And the fact that he was able to take out the entire Straw Hat crew on his own goes to show that this motherfucker deserves S tier, no doubt about it. Are we gonna do A's, dude? A's... I'm going to put him in A. I think um, the toxic nature of his mentality of, of being like, um, uh, 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 like, like when he died, the thing that I thought the most was you should have kept running. I think he could have easily got, been able to escape, especially considering Trafalgar Law was in a fucking submarine not so far from here. I think easily he could have gotten away. But then this sort of like mentality of like, I need to fight and I can't turn back. They explored that, you know, in the post-war section in the, the um, thing. I'm still unsatisfied with the fact that he's died. And I think it, it will prove to be a, a positive thing in the grand scheme of it all because it will, uh, it will provide a sort of motivation for Luffy, you know, in the grand scheme of it all to... Um, transform him into a, a stronger, more confident, more uh, powerful individual. But I also think Ace would have been an incredible character to explore while he was still alive. I feel like they kind of did him dirty in showcasing his relationship with Luffy after the fact that he was dead. Because when he died, honestly, I personally didn't feel too bad. I like was like, yeah, you know, it's unfortunate. I felt more bad for Luffy, honestly, than I felt for Ace, the guy who actually died. And so, uh, he can't be S tier for me, unfortunately. I can't put him in S tier just because of that. Just because he should have kept running, in my opinion. Again, uh, these are just opinions that I have on these fictional characters. So don't get too, too twisted over it, you know. But, um, Apu, I feel like he's a character that I do need more information on. That being said, the displays that he's showcased so far, I feel like would at least put him at B. Um... I don't think he's better than I kind of though.
I, I do think he's better than Lafayette. This motherfucker is part of the Blackbeard Pirates. Again, we've gotten showcases of him. More than anything, we've gotten a repetition of where like they show their names so that we can get accustomed to them. And I think Fishman Island and the remainder of the show will be uh, a, a better exploration of all of these characters. I think so far we've gotten so little that it's unfair for me to judge them uh, accordingly. Um, so yeah, I feel like for any Blackbeard Pirate, any um, uh, uh, um, Red Hair Pirate, they're going to be down here because I don't have enough information. Um... Whitebeard is easy, bro. S tier, fucking goaded. Hell yeah, motherfucker. Like, um, um, what is there to say here? Because Whitebeard was literally the the leader of the the, the previous era, and uh, I think he he's on the top of everybody here, motherfucker. Like, by far, I think Whitebeard is one of the most compelling characters, uh, showcasing ideas of like brotherhood and fatherhood, uh, chosen family. So interesting. The fact that he went around the world collecting individuals who were outcasts, who were um, not accepted by society, you know. Anytime, you know, I've mentioned this time and time again with the show. Anytime somebody stands against um, uh, uh, discrimination of some sort, who people who stand for the mar marginalized, I, I have no choice but to stand, dude. It's like he created a whole fucking army of motherfuckers who were outcasts in society. And personally, I think that's fucking cool, so... Uh, easy, easy top. No, nobody will go ahead uh, above Whitebeard in my opinion. Blackbeard. Ooh, how interesting that Whitebeard and Blackbeard are right next to each other. Um, I think Blackbeard is, uh, dude. Oh, I almost want to put him in S only because this motherfucker has accomplished so many fucking incredible feats, and um, uh, you can say if you take the ethical out of all the shit that he actually even even if you don't i think everybody has choices right and he at some point or another crafted a plan that that, that included a lot of choices that were kind of bad sure he murdered his crewmate on the whitebeard pirates and he stole his devil fruit. he even stole whitebeard's devil fruit and we can flame him for that if you'd like but do the it, it, it's one of those scenarios where it's like do the means justify the 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 is that i don't even know how to use that actually so <laughs> i don't know man personally i love a good antagonist i think uh blackbeard will fulfill that role so well and i think he set himself up with uh taking whitebeard's power to do so i think he's gonna be fucking good i think he's gonna I don't know if he's going to be going up against Luffy necessarily because as we've seen in the show, bitches just fight with other bitches. Like, there, there's no... Like, Luffy is not the only protagonist, you know? Like, there's... I, I, I think it, it could be arguable that all the supernovas could be viewed as their own protagonist in their own story. Even though we are only getting the perspective from Luffy, I don't know if Luffy's going to be the one to fight Blackbeard, but if he does, I think he will face... Uh, or he will be such a fucking enormous threat that... I don't know. I think... I think I'm going to push him down to A tier only because, um, again, we come back to the, to the fact that, you know, we have choices and Blackbeard chose to do some of the most unethical shit, yet that let him to get to the new world. That let him to create a fucking crew of pirates that is a notoriously legendary and I don't know, dude. It's, it's, it's a complicated matter. I almost want to put him back in S tier only because who the fuck else is going to pull the shit? Who the fuck else is going to have two devil fruits, motherfucker? Like, ah. I also adore the way that they went about showing this character because when he was introduced in the motherfucking Skypea art, dude, when he was introduced there, you had no fucking clue this motherfucker would be the one to 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 be here where he is today like he was shown and he almost looked like a fucking homeless man dude just on the side of the of, of the road and then in that moment he like met with luffy and they had a conversation i don't really remember what it was about but it was like who would have thought that this guy and in that moment you know what i thought about this before but in that moment where luffy ran into him in the skypea arc he had already murdered um his crewmate he had already killed the the, the white beard um crew member so 
it's so interesting when you go back to look at all this shit. And I think Blackbeard is a fantastic character in that regard. That we get little pieces that start moving. Episode 300, they kind of threw him in there a little bit, you know. I don't know if it was 300, but I'm just, you know, just, just saying. Um, and the fact that somehow, after all this time, after all this build-up, he actually managed to become such a fucking cool character. I, I He deserves A. We'll leave him at A. I think I'll stop talking about him for now, because... I think there's a lot of things to be said about Blackbeard, and, um, hey, you know, the comments are free, we can fucking talk about it in the comments if you'd like, I think, um, there's a lot of interesting conversations to be had about the guy, because, ah, it's just ethics, man, when you take ethics out of the situation, it's like, Blackbeard should be rewarded for, for taking advantage of a situation that he could, you know, and, uh, I mean, but I think only because he chose to go about gaining power in such a such a dark way i feel like that's the only thing keeping him back from being s tier because then you got motherfucker like white bird you really gonna put the guy who he stole his pot like he, you really can't put them next to each other i think white beard's sense of 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 self not even that like um like the mentality that he has about the way that you should live is so fucking cool that I can't put somebody like Blackbeard next to him, to be fair. This guy, I don't even know his name. I think th this is... I think he has a cool power, but I don't know him too well. Actually, you know what? Ah, is he better than Apple? I don't think he's better than Apple. I think Apple's gonna, um, is gonna fucking be wilder us, um, soon enough. I think he, he's such a fucking zany character that it's like, I think Apple's gonna be good. Um... This guy, I think he has a cool power. That being said, having like a fucking... I feel like his power could be easily rendered useless. Because, um, you know, he opens little shits within him and like there's a whole battleship within him. That's cool. But if you know what's going on, if you just take out the one guy, isn't that doesn't that just like take him out of commission? Like you know what I mean? He is one of those characters that I do feel like I need more information on. But if we will judge him based on what we've seen, I think C is a proper rank for him. I don't think he he dude having a kind of next to these guys. I feel like I think he he deserves it only because he's a fucking dick. Um, what the fuck is his name? Oh no, I don't remember his name. Um, we'll skip him. I kind of, I feel like I'll remember later on. So I'll let you put him at the end, actually. Bola Hancock. Ah, oh, what a fucking, this one is going to be an interesting one. Ah, oh, man. What an interesting character, dude. I think as powerful as she is, she falls short of S tier due to the fact that she's being utilized in such a strange way, like in Marine Ford, you know, she defended the 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 Whitebeard um coalition a couple of times, and that's cool in her own way. She did it in such a pacifist way sometimes to defend from the pacifistas. Um, then you know, attacking Marines when she got the chance, being like, "I'm not on your side. I'm on my own side." Um, though at the end of Marine Ford, she's just here. Um, fucking how do you say that like like in love with luffy and really that's been a, a part of the care her character that's been defining of her for for a while now i think that brings her down i think um boy hancock is a strong independent woman and she don't need no man and um the fact that she's being played off like that i think she could even be b both for boa hancock I think so. I think we'll put her there. I think she could be so much better. I think as they continue to explore her character further, maybe we'll see how more interesting she can be when the entirety of her character isn't only, oh, like, you know, I can appreciate that because, yeah, it's such a realistic, such a, a real human feeling to have, to fucking love somebody. We've all been there. We all, you know, it's real. It's true. It's there. But when that's the only thing that we can say about your character at, this point in time uh, i mean i think she could be doing more honestly but then again I, one of the things is as well is that she's like one of the few female characters in this show who is fucking powerful and they diminish her 
to being like Luffy's wife. Like, bruh, Bella Hancock is so cool. So cool that she has a fucking whole island of women. Only women, no fucking man is allowed to go in there. I think that's fucking cool. But then she's belittled to, oh, I'm in love with Luffy. Oh, he said my name for the 10th time. Like, shut the fuck up, dude. Like, I don't know. And then, but then again, her being in love with Luffy is also, like, so indicative of, like, her emotional maturity. I don't know why the fuck I'm getting into this conversation. But then it's, like, the way that she loves Luffy almost comes off to seem like this is the first time that she's been in love. Which, sure, you know, that's cool. But, um, considering all the shit that's happened in her life, I feel like we can cut her some slack based on the fact that she's being utilized like this. Because, um... They could be doing something more than we're unable to see in the present time, I think, maybe. But we'll see how they continue to uh, use her as a character. I think she has incredible potential, but it really depends. Aw, oh, dude. Aw, oh, Bonkure, bro. Bonkure is easy A. I'm not going to put him in S tier simply because he just doesn't have the power to compete, you know. But um, when it comes to characters, I think Bonkure is one of the more interesting characters. A lot of the shit that happened in Marine Ford wouldn't have happened had it not been for Bonkure sacrificing himself in that one moment. And uh, one of the... I don't know if I cried, but I it almost made me cry, I think, that part, because it was just like... It was so good, dude. Easy A for me. Um, You know, we, lo we, we stand queer characters. Anybody that stands against the norm, we have no choice but to stand. Um, to stand. <laughs> Um, what do we got here? What what can we say about Bonkure? I mean, yeah, let's let's let the man rest in peace. Um, Bonnie. Bonnie's in an interesting situation right now. I think I'm gonna put her uh, the same level as a supernova. I think Apple. He was just more interesting to me uh, of the bunch. Her power. It needs to be explored more. I don't know if it will, considering she's in Akainu's hands. It will would seem like her most probable fate is to die. But I, w I wish they explored her power a little bit more. I think she has more potential. Um, but, I mean... I don't know. I don't know if she has potential necessarily. Um, but I don't really remember what her power was. I think it just, like changes the age of people around her or something like that and she has to eat like a lot of food or something i don't really remember um being that unmemorable what are we gonna do with the straw hat pirates because technically sure they were present in the end but like they weren't really present in the marine fort arc at all almost so it's like let's go to buggy actually buggy hmm buggy so we do B for Buggy. Um, I think I think I'm gonna do C. Buggy, he, you know what? Buggy, even though he's a fucking coward, even though he's fucking powerless, and he will most likely inevitably meet a terrible fate due to the fact that he's taking advantage of a lot of people. It, it it's one of those situations again, kind of like what like Blackbeard that it's like. He's going about becoming famous and becoming a, 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 a legendary pirate in such a fucking roundabout way that I don't necessarily know if it's going to work. That being said, I do have the theory that he will be recruited to be to fulfill one of the uh, warlords of the sea because he did get that invitation from the from the government. And so I think it's possible for him to become one of the warlords of the sea. Now, if. Through pure fucking bullshit, Buggy gets to be a warlord of the sea. I think that, like, like he fucking deserves it, bro. I, I always feel like he deserves it after all the bullshit he's been through. And then, I feel like, at a point, in the, inevitably, in the future, the shit will hit the fan. And he'll have to come to, to, the, to the face the reality of the fact that he's not powerful enough. Not powerful enough to be considered a warlord of the sea. Um, I think, I think I'm not gonna rank the the uh, Straw Hat crew for this time being because their time in the Marine Ford arc was so brief uh, towards the end. Um, so yeah, I feel like we can rank them at a different point in time during a different arc. Cami, um, characters like this, 
I don't really care about too much, to be honest with you. Like, I think the only thing I really remember about her is that she's, like, part mermaid. I think she actually, you know what? She brings up an interesting question in the way that this world functions between fishmen and fish and then men. Like, how many different combinations is there? How, can humans, like, procreate with fishmen? And if they can, is that what this is? Is that what Cammy is? Because she looks human, but she does have the fucking mermaid tail or whatever. But then you look at somebody like Jimbe, and this motherfucker doesn't look human at all. He looks like a fucking whale shark. And so, like, is that a difference? Between, like, do the women look more human? Do the men look more like fish? And, like, there's no other fishman here. That's so fucking sad. Jimbe's really the only fishman here. Well, oh, here you go, Hachi. Uh, you know, like, like, I feel like these guys, like Jimbe and Hachi, are, like, a different generation than Kami because they look more like fish whereas she looks more human when you don't take into consideration the fucking giant fish tail right i don't know maybe maybe i'm, I'm thinking too too deep into this that doesn't need to be thought about this deep right um hmm kami wasn't even in this she wasn't on the screen for like a total of a minute bro like um that being said i think i'm gonna put her in d definitely not like a mepo definitely not as forgettable as whatever this is but um yeah i remember her name cool uh, Katharina Devon. I don't have enough information. Choppa. Choppa. Uh, we're not going to rank the Straw Hats in this one. Because, like, where the fuck would I even put him? Oof. Kobe, dude. Kobe? Mm, this, this is personal bias 100%. Kobe does not stand a chance against any of these motherfuckers here. But... That moment on 488 in Marine Ford is so fucking good. That that alone puts him here. I think Kobe has so much fucking potential after that moment. The fact that he's in the process of developing a kind of hockey motherfucker. Like, a lot of people don't get to use hockey at all, but Kobe does. And you know what? I thought, because he only started experiencing this after Luffy sucked the fucking shit out of him. So, I can... Maybe it was one of those moments where... um. Like, you know, the, um, this is completely out of the fucking lore. The fucking, uh, Chimera Ant arc when, um, when the rabbit guy or somebody punched somebody and that's how they transferred Nen. That's kind of the vibe that I got from Kobe. Like, Luffy punched him and maybe he transferred some fucking hockey into him and that it, it, it made his hockey become active or some shit like that. But after Luffy punched him, he started hearing the voices and shit. And so... I don't know, maybe that's what happened, I don't know, but it's something that I kind of, I connected it to that moment in um, Hunter x Hunter because it, it kind of felt similar in some regards and maybe the transfer or activation of power that is dormant within people, but then if under the right conditions it could be um, activated, I feel like that's kind of what it was, but I don't know if that's necessarily the case. That being said, Kobe standing up against a kind of being willing to throw away his life to uh get his point across to end this war and the, all the unnecessarily slaughter my man nothing but respect for kobe dude um oh you know i you know i love crocodile i'm gonna put him in a um crocodile had a lot of interesting um scenarios in this arc uh there was times where um he was the one who showed up when I didn't think anybody would. When um, they were about to execute Ace, I think the first or the second time, he was the one who stopped it. Um, when uh, I kind of was reaching for Jinbei, he was the one who was there. You know what? Crocodile, he's a, 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 probably a terrible fucking character. For all I know, he'll go on murdering dozens of people. But if you want to just focus on those acts there, I think... I don't know. I almost wish they explored him as a character a little bit further. I think if they gave us his backstory and potentially all of the fucked up shit that happened in his life, I would come to a point potentially of like justifying it. There is the alabasta shit, you know, and everybody even within the show was like, why the fuck are you guys together? Weren't you enemies long ago? But he's fucking badass, bro. And I don't know, those moments kind of cemented him for me. 
uh, because he could have easily been like, Jimbe, who the fuck is Jimbe, you know? I don't know, I don't know him, fuck him, you know? But instead, he protected him. And he said, if you're going to protect something, do it right. Oh, motherfucker. Like, he's definitely not Whitebeard level, not Al Alkiji level, I don't think. But um, I, uh, maybe I'm just simping too hard. Maybe he's just A. I think I'm gonna move him down to A. I don't think he stands on the same on the same level. I think he's better than than Bokure, actually. Actually, probably not. Ah, this is this is gonna get so hard after a while. Um, Dadan, Dadan. I'll put her at C. She's not bad. Is Buggy deserving of C? I think Buggy could be top C. Uh, I think Dadan is higher than these two characters. Uh, only I think the only reason why they're lower than her is because again we don't have that much information about them. And the little that we have seen would more or less put them here for me, but this is a Blackbeard pirate. I don't think he, um, Doc Q. I think his name was so interesting that I managed to remember it. Now, we get to the fucking profile picture, the PFP, easy fucking S tier. I think, and I've mentioned this a couple of times throughout the different reactions that I made for the show, that... Um, Don Quixote, Don Flamingo is such a fucking interesting character. He can lose points for currently working for the Navy. He could lose points, um, for, I don't know, a dark history that he has mur murdering multiple people. I don't know. That's not, that's, that's not what I'm here for. This motherfucker, uh, in a, an episode not too long ago, actually, he stood up in front of a, a, a world government employee telling him, motherfucker, you don't tell me what to do. You're not my boss. And if at any point in time, this gig becomes boring, I'm going to dip. And it's like, this guy, the entirety of the fucking war, he was just there laughing his ass off, commentating on how the, the nature of the pirate world was going to change and shit. My man, honestly, I, I found a lot of his commentary to be so interesting and so revealing of the, the nature of the pirate world that i think he easily deserves s here i don't know much about his power at this point in time i don't really know what's going on with his power and what he's capable of doing um but he stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with fucking crocodile so i think uh, he easily deserves fucking s here i wish they would have shown that because um when crocodile saved ace from being executed the second time um Don Quixote went and got him and they fought or whatever. He chopped off his head. He's a Logia. It doesn't matter. Whatever. But um, I wish they would have shown that fight. That would have been an interesting fight. Um, yeah, I think easy. He deserves that tier, yeah. Uh, X Drake. I think he's cool. I think he stands um higher than these two guys at least. And maybe even in, in B tier actually. Uh, I think, uh, what was it, an ancient son type? I think that's fucking cool. The fact that he's able to turn into a fucking T-Rex, bro, that's fucking cool. Because um, I, I, I thought about questioning that aspect of One Piece as well, where it's like, there are dinosaurs in this bitch, like, actual dinosaurs. Like, we saw a fucking, the flying dinosaur eat a bird in the last episode, I think, and it's like, what? But actually, considering it's One Piece, literally anything is possible, so... It doesn't, I figured I'm not going to make a big deal out of that. But, um, yeah, I think it's cool that he could turn into a T-Rex. It's kind of kind of weird. Like, I feel like of all the dinosaurs, why the fuck would you want to be a T-Rex, you know? But, like, hey. Um, who the fuck is this? This is that one guy. Um, I forgot his name. I think he's kind of whack, honestly. Uh, the, the way that he handles himself constantly being like, I'm so handsome. Like, shut the fuck up, motherfucker. I'll put him in C only because he's protecting the ship. Frankie, I don't really want to rank you right now. I don't think... Um, Yeah. Garp. Ooh, this is an interesting one. I had not... Cause like, most of these people, I have a general idea about where it is I want to put them, you know? Like, Whitebeard, easy fucking top of the list. Uh, Aikoji, Aokiji, sorry. Um, easily an S here, you know? Because they're just fucking indomitable forces. But then Garp. Hmm, we can throw a lot of criticism his way, uh, the way that Dadan did, because, um, yeah, he was there when, um, Ace was about to get executed, he didn't do anything about it, um, he is one of the characters that I think is the most interesting in the way that they used him, um, kind of psychologically, because you have these two dynamics of, like, wanting to stand for what you believe in, him, um, 
supporting the Navy, continuing his job, doing his little shit. But then also, this is his family that's about to get murdered. I think it's such an interesting dynamic that I think it warrants him at least be here. Um, I don't necessarily know where on this uh, it would go, but uh, definitely at least be. Um, yeah, I think he's the one I thought about the least before making this. Because, of course, you know, I, I, I'm thinking about where the hell I'm going to put all these characters. Why the fuck is this guy here? Are the, the impel down bitches in here? They are. Should I just do them? I think Hannibal is actually, oddly enough, what I put him? Such a good character, actually. I'm going to put him in B as well. Um... Because I, I thought the um, his beginning story, like the way they were going about saying that he was going to be the next warden, I thought it was kind of annoying. But then when this motherfucker stood up against the uh, makeshift Straw Hat crew in that point in time, I was just like, this guy, he... Because he like kept getting fucking destroyed, but he kept standing up. And we got to stand the bitch who keeps standing up, you know? <laughs> Um, her, again, it's like a support character who is wise, who's cool, but like, eh, I kind of hate the way that she's, she squeaks, she's one, she's like, yum, yum, shut the fuck up, dude, like, um, Hachi, I think Hachi's cool, um, he definitely redeemed himself in some regards, um, formerly a Arlong pirate, now, uh, a free, um, cook or whatever the fuck he's doing, he's, he has like a little, um, a boat. Uh, cafe or whatever the fuck um, a long time ago that I saw those episodes um, I think it's probably B tier as well I think C tier is kind of like eh, and D tier is kind of like like these guys are like eh, eh, you know and F tier is kind of like yeah we you literally actually we should actually delete you from here but we won't um, Jimbe oh my lord dude I don't know if I want to put Jinbei in S tier, A tier, but uh, he's one of them too. Easy. Jinbei has... He's probably even better than Don Quixote, honestly. Like, Jinbei, he's another character that, had he not been there, a lot of the, uh, of the events that went down wouldn't have happened. Jinbei, fucking pride of, of, of Fishman, and he became a Shibukai to prevent the government from harassing Fishman. Motherfucker, Jinbei... Such a fucking good character. So many of the lines that he drops are so wise. So indicative of his... Uh, like, again, we come back to, like, emotional maturity. Jinbei is with his feet on the ground. And this motherfucker is so fucking cool, calm, collected. And you know I fucking love that shit. It's so fucking cool. I think easy S tier, bro. Jinbei is so fucking cool. I most definitely hope you come back to visit him again. He is a fucking treat and a half. Um... I forget this man's name. Hawkins? I think that's his name, but forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, I think he's Easy S tier, one of the more powerful uh, supernovas. Uh, such an interesting character uh, in, in the way that um, he kind of has these tarot cards, which he uses, but then at the same time, he's got so much fucking shit. This is like the fucking black magic character in One Piece because he's got the fucking voodoo dolls. He's got the tarot cards. He'll tell you your fucking fortune. He's, like, creepily, like, cool, calm, and collected in his own way. But, like, it's kind of weird. He doesn't like jokes. Like, what an interesting character. I'll, I'll leave it at that. I think he most definitely warrants A tier, though. Because um, he's so fucking diverse in the powers that he holds. Well, is he really? I feel like, again, the Supernovas, I think Fishman Island will do them justice uh, in uh, exploring their characters and the ca their capabilities further. But, um, yeah, yeah, I, I think uh, Fishman Island will be a better place to judge a lot of these characters. Um, for example, the Supernovas, the Black Reed Pirates. Um, I don't know if we'll get to the Red Hair Pirates yet, but at some point in the New World, we will have to. Um... This bitch, again, supporting characters, to me, they're not that interesting. A lot of the times, they kind of just fall into the background. And um, uh, she didn't say anything that was necessarily interesting to me. So I think she, she falls there. Even Dadan. Dadan is better. I think Dadan had a lot more interesting interactions with some of the characters. That um, Yeah, I think that's that's fair. Herkluson, another character that speaks kind of interestingly. But I do think I don't have enough information on the man. Um, Inazuma. 
I think Inazuma gets a C tier, probably somewhere around here, cause uh, you know they're not that powerful, and um, I think their power their power is interesting in its own regards. Though that being said, they do not stand a chance against all of these motherfuckers. So yeah, I think that power is so limited to a certain degree. Hmm. I don't know. I, I also feel like that's another character that can be explored further, but hey. Um, Ivankov. Luffy would be dead without Ivankov. I think Ivankov is an easy A. Uh, what is there worth mentioning? Uh, one of the few queer characters within the show. Um, I say that even though they just fucking cross-dress or they're, they're just uh, Okamas. Um, but I feel like that's that's like the, the indicative uh, uh, character at least I don't, like because I don't really know much about Japanese culture but it seems like they don't necessarily um, like explore queerness in their media too much um, so I hey, give me fucking event cup. I'll fucking take it bro Jozu um, I feel like Jozu from the Whitebeard Pirates was probably the most underwhelming because he has this power that lets him turn into diamond, uh, which is uh, one of the strongest um, um, minerals um, on earth or whatever. So, you know, the guy can turn into a hard stone, which can have a multitude of uses. That being said, I think it's also very limited. And I think he, um, I don't know, I think he could be overpowered because like, you know, the motherfucker who hits hard, he's cool. But like, if that's all you can really do, it's like, he doesn't even just hit hard, bro. He just can become hard. Which I guess those c could mean he could hit hard. But, you know, that's... Yeah, Jozu, I'll put him at B. He, he's interesting. I think I think I kind of might be higher than him. Mm, yeah, I think he's pretty good, actually. Use this kid. Um, As cocky and as volatile of a character that he seems to be, I think he's interesting. I think, I think uh, again, it's another one of those things where it's like his power is cooler than him so i think that alone pushes him a little bit higher um i think he's definitely over over hawkins i think kobe needs to be kobe's gonna be the bottom of h i think he's gonna be actually b tier to be honest with you i love kobe but um now that i see him next to all these other motherfuckers it's like kobe does not yeah he's simply not on the same league though he does deserve the respect uh for being uh the cool character that he was in 488 which we'll talk about but um that's that's for another time kobe really cool um, where were we? Um, uh, I think this is pretty fair. Uh, yeah. Ooh, Killer. I think, honestly, Killer is better than Eustace Kid. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Like, this motherfucker, he doesn't have, um, the same amount of power, I don't think, but he's so wise. And it, 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 it's a, an interesting dynamic, again, with this character that, um, He's both the bronze and the brains. And it's like, you know, when you get the best of both worlds, motherfucker, I'll take it. This guy is so fucking cool. Uh, interesting that he's a faceless character. Uh, uh, and the fact that he has knowledge about the fucking 16 bells, that alone is what makes me think that, you know, he's a little bit more intelligent than Eustace Kid. Um, probably not as powerful, but most definitely interesting. Um, Kizaru, uh, I think Kizaru's an easy A. You know what? Kizaru. <sighs> He's a weird one because I almost like him even though he is kind of like the in-between of um, Aikainu and Aokiji when it comes to like temperament or like like their, their like mentality and like the way they care about themselves. Like Aokiji would be chill. Then Kizaru would be like, eh, you know, he's not that chill. And then I kind of was just like completely demented. He's like a good middle ground between the two. I think that's interesting. Um, he's had a couple of uh, of interesting um, dialogue interchanges with some characters that I think um, easily puts him in S tier. Um, he hasn't been shown to be extremely cruel when we look at his character from the perspective of the Navy. Technically, this motherfucker is just doing his job. The same could be said about Akainu. That being said, Akainu has killed people on screen unnecessarily. So it's like, you know, 
I think he's always a cooler character than Aikainu when it comes to that. So, a easy S here for me. Um, will this be Pazifista or will this be Mr. Bartholomew Kuma? Uh, I think Bartholomew Kuma is an easy A as well. Uh, uh, which is bizarre because we've got so little when it comes to speech from him, when it comes to shit like that. But this motherfucker is part of the Revolutionary Army. He, in the moment where Kizaru was about to wipe out the entire Straw Hat crew, showed up and sent them all away to directions that are different from each other, to um, places which, in the grand scheme of it all, ended up being beneficial for them. And um, honestly, I think his story will turn to be one of the more sadder stories when it comes to One Piece, because at one point in time, he was part of the Revolutionary Army, and in the present time, he is... Um, a machine for the Navy, which is the complete opposite of what I imagine he would want to be. But um, it, it, it's so interesting because I almost feel like he'll be like he was probably the middle ground for um, um, for the Revolutionary Army to find information about the Navy and also vice versa. Maybe if the Navy has some knowledge about him being part of the Revolutionary Army. It could easily be the fact that they're um, extracting information about the Revolutionary Army for the Navy. And I think, I don't know, I kind of feel bad for the guy. Um, yeah, he, he's lost his self, sense of self. That's how, that's the best way I've found to describe his condition. Um, and that's unfortunate. Like, he's just a robot at this point. And it's like, damn, bro. He, at first, uh, I think he was first introduced in the... the um, What's this motherfucker's name? In his arc, in the... Oh, man. Uh, the Thriller Bark arc. Holy fuck. Why can't I remember that? The Thriller Bark arc. Um, oh, shit. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Bartholomew Kumba. He was first introduced in the Thriller Bark arc. And in that arc, he kind of seemed to be a little bit more... Uh, to have a little bit more of himself, and I think he even, um, if I remember correctly, he dropped like a couple of wise words. So anytime the character like says something that I'm like, wow, that's so wise, I'm like, inevitably I end up thinking about them higher than I do other characters. If that makes any sense, I think it's indicative of their uh, mental state. It's indicative of the kind of character that they are. And hey, you know, Trafalgar Law, motherfucker, ah. Another one of the fucking supernovas that's really good. Um, oh, man. Um, I think he's better than Crocodile in some regards. I mean, he literally saved Luffy's life, bro. Like, I think Trafalgar Law is easy A, and as we continue to explore the character further, he could easily become an S-tier character. Um, yeah, I mean... Uh, as well as him, as all the other supernovas, it's it's again the situation where we have some information, but not enough to be able to give you like a, a conclusive on answer. Luffy, ooh, Luffy, Luffy, Luffy. Where do we put Luffy in this? Um, I think Luffy's an A tier. Um, I, I think he's probably on the same level as as some of these uh, supernovas. And sure, that's such a power. I could easily put Luffy in S tier, but to be fair, I think um, he's at an interesting place in time uh, right now because, um, uh, you know, how, how do we say it? Like, he's cool, and I feel like a lot of the feats that he's been able to accomplish most definitely put him in S tier. That being said, he is not strong enough, and I think as he continues to um, evolve throughout the remainder of the show, he will easily become an S-tier character. Him being an A at this point in time is actually kind of good for him, so... Um, and that's really, that's just fucking personal bias, to be completely fair. Uh, him being an A-tier right now. Um, Magellan. Uh, probably one of the more underwhelming antagonists for me, which I think will put him at a lower rank than Hannibal. Which is interesting because um, I, at the end of Impel Down, most likely, or um, not most likely, um, definitely ended up liking Hannibal more than um, um, Maglan, which is so interesting. Um, I think his power is cool. Um, but yeah, you know, eh, you know, I, yeah, I, I think that's fair for him. Um, I, a lot of the times, 
he was kind of used as like a poop joke, which you know that's that's kind of on the fucking uh, spectrum of comedy. That's fuck like the worst level of fucking comedy. So it's like you know he he that doesn't really help much. Oh Marco, easy S tier, easy S tier for me. Probably the best on um, Whitebird Pirates uh, a member. Where's Ace? Oh, he's right here. Let's put the brothers together. Okay. Um, Marco. Mm, I don't know. Like, he, Kizaru. I think Kizaru gets pulled, pushed back because Doflamingo's kind of cool. I almost want to push Aokiji back as well, but I don't know if Doflamingo is better or worse than Aokiji. Mm, I think this is fair. Marco. <sighs> is he better than Doflamingo? I don't think he is. Honestly, I think Marco's power is cool. It's kind of broken that he's like invincible more or less because he like regenerates and whatever um and i also if we'll throw like at this point in time he's an s tier relax okay i'm just nitpicking at the fact that his design as a phoenix it looks so fucking corny bro like let me pull up an image let me throw that shit up here that shit looks so fucking corny bro like he looks like like a nerd <laughs> um that being said, he's still one of the more powerful characters in this show, so there you go. S tier. Um, I don't know which one is Sander Sonia, which one is um, the other one, but uh, I think they they kind of fall into the same place. Um, they're powerful, but Luffy could beat them, so I think uh, they um, fall into like the B tier kind of character. Yeah, like, they're cool, and they're present, and they're kind of powerful. They can use hockey. But they're not that, they're, they're not better than Boa Hancock. Um, yeah, Mihawk, another fucking easy S tier, bro. Mihawk, may I say, probably one of the best characters in this fucking show. From the fucking Barity, bro. He was introduced in the fucking Barity, and he's still present, and he's still the same motherfucker. He's still cool, calm, and collected, and powerful. Um, and he, ooh, you know what? The last episode that I watched um, introduced or gave us a more direct um, explanation of what hockey is. And so now that I have that in mind, um, it seems like the color of armaments... Um, because uh, um, Raby did say you could imbue weapons with hockey. A lot of the attacks that uh, Mihawk used during the war were like shockwaves, which, you know, coming from a sword doesn't really make sense. That being said, maybe the sword is fucking, I don't know, futuristic technology. I don't know about, I don't know. But that seems like that would be hockey, right? Another thing as well was this motherfucker, Zoro. He also has, um, where is he? Right here. Some attacks that don't really make sense to me. Like, you remember at that one point in the Sabori Archipelago where this motherfucker became three motherfuckers and he had nine swords? Like, what the fuck was that? I think the easy, the easy answer to that question is it's hockey, right? Like, um, in the same way in which every character has the ability to interpret hockey and make hockey, um, whatever, or not hockey, I was trying to compare it to Nen. You know how Nen, they have different kinds of shit. You know, they got their whole little thing going on. Um, that being said, every character interprets that shit on their own way. And they create their powers that are best suited for them. And I think this is what um, hockey is. It, it's like the, the Nen, right? And um, uh, I think Zoro becoming this fucking multiple individual in that point in time. At a point in time that was pushing him to the limits. I think that's hockey, right? That would make sense if that was hockey. Um, not really make sense, but it would explain why the fuck this motherfucker can do some shit like that, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, Mihawk. We were on Mihawk. What can I say, dude? I've used this man for, like, five different thumbnails because he's just so fucking good. Um, nothing but respect for him. Nothing but respect for the best swordsman. And now that he's training Zoro, I think I will even find more shit that I like about him because, um... Uh, you know, uh, we've seen him as a fucking warlord the whole time, which is fair. He is a warlord. He he deserves that rank, unlike um, Buggy. That I don't even know if Buggy will get it, but I feel like he will only because he got that one message. Um, I don't even know what to say about the man. He's just fucking cool, bro. He has a fucking huge sword. He will kill you and everybody you know. Like he's good. Um, this guy, I don't remember his name. I think I'll put him in C tier. 
Uh, he's okay. He's like a vice admiral, I believe. Um, not really that interesting of a character for me. He didn't really live too much of an an impact on me. It, you know, he's just like he was okay, I think. Um, so C is like the middle ground. He's okay. Um, Gecko Moria. I honestly kind of hate this guy. Uh, I think I'm, I might put him in C tier, bro. He's a warlord of the sea. That being said. He's another one of those characters that, like, goes about handling his business in such a fucking weird way, bro. Like, why do you have to take people's shadows? Like, obviously, I know this is his power, and, like, it's something that he has to do in order for his power to be, like, good. But it's like, this guy's kind of weird, man. It's like, he, uh, you know, like, uh, Gecko Moria. Honestly, I was kind of glad when Doflamingo took him out because I was just like, this guy, he's, he's just not it, bro. Like, Jinbei took him out like nothing, and he's supposed to be a warlord of the sea. I don't know. I'm not a fan. I, I eh, you know. Um, who the fuck is this? Mr. Three? I think so, actually. I don't see Mr. Three anywhere else. Um, Mr. Three, he actually grew on me. I think he's higher than, than Buggy. Um... I don't think he's in beats here, but um, in that one moment, he made a key that freed Ace. Obviously, Ace ended up dying anyway, so those efforts were more or less in vain. Um, but hey, man, he did his part, and he did it well, and I think he's cool. Um, obviously, not as cool as all these other guys, but, you know, it is what it is. Mr. One, um, definitely a more powerful character. Um <laughs> Like, I think his power is so cool, but then the lack of personality, the lack of of, of life within him, uh, kind of brings... I almost want to put him in C tier, but I think his power is so cool that he's the bottom of, of B tier. And then, um, we can use him to try to see... Because, like, if we were doing a competition, like, this is kind of a competition, I am kind of using that to some degree, but that being said, in my personal opinion, obviously overrides any kind of competition we can set here, like, because when we set him up next to uh, Alkainu, it's like, yeah, he doesn't really stand a chance. Bo Hancock, probably not as well. Um, Joe's, maybe not. He's probably better than Apple, so technically he should be here, but his lack of personality kind of puts him there for me. The, you know, like, I was expecting... Marine board to make me like him more, but it didn't and I think we can look at this from a multitude of perspectives and we can easily say hey This guy has suffered a bunch of shit through his life. That is why he is the way that he is presently That's why he's so quiet and kind of reserved and he kind of just follows what crocodile says, you know um, He's a weird character another character that I wish they explored further, but uh, uh, maybe that's uh, to come in the future Let's see. Not me. I don't really care. You were not really present in this story. Little Ors Jr. Uh, I almost want to put him in D tier, bro. It's kind of bad. Uh, the thing about this guy is he kind of just threw himself away, to be honest with you. Like, you know, having the emotion behind wanting to save somebody is cool but if you have no plan to execute that idea that you have it, he it's so sad i almost feel like he could have been utilized differently and i think he could have easily shifted the um the pace of the war for the better had he um i don't know i mean i mean he played his part he opened the little when they said mobilize the walls and the walls came up he kept that one wall down enough for us to go through it which you know if you want to give him credit for that sure that's fair but what did he actually accomplish here honestly it doesn't seem like much i'll bump him to c tier i think d is, is a little too 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 low for him but that being said um I think he's better than Gecko Moria. Gecko Moria should be the bottom of fucking C tier. Uh, I think this guy's kind of whack. I think um, they're maybe better than Bonnie. They're better than him, I think. Are they better than Dadan? Uh, um, what is this bitch's name? The ghost bitch.
You know what? D tier. I don't like this bitch. Honestly, all the women in the show, I just, that's so bad. Hey, you know what? There's some bitches in C tier. There's some bitches in, in B tier. <laughs> it, I don't hate women, okay? It's just some bitches are just so fucking annoying. Like, this bitch is always like, yeah, ah, shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> Rayleigh, easy S tier, bro. Legendary pirate. Uh, better than Kizaru. Um, probably better than Marco. Um, I don't think he's better than Do Flamingo yet. That being said, he does, does have the potential to be. Um, yeah. Um, Nico Robin, you go down here. Sabo. Ooh, I think Sabo's an easy A character. Um, I initially undermined his struggles because he is a child born into a noble family, you know, generally. Those situations, I feel like, um, initially my criticisms were like, you don't have it that bad. You technically, you could outlive um, your family and keep their fucking money and then do something different with your life, uh, do something. But then when he said that he doesn't want the, this country to change him, that is kind of when I started understanding what it is he was about. And I kind of, I got, I got no choice but to stand. It's another one of those scenarios where it's like, he's right. And the fact that he was able to recognize that at such a young age, I think a lot of these characters, that is one of the things that I think I find most interesting that at such a young age, they were able to prevail in situations which are fucking unfair and like terrible, but like, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, the show kind of made it seem like he was dead, but honestly, I think he's still alive. I think he, I don't know, like, like they weren't even that sad about it. Like he died and that one episode. And then after that, they didn't even mention it at all. It's like, I think if he would have died, it would have been like a, a scenario like Ace where they were like, oh, there was like five different episodes that talked about that shit. You know, mm, I think of other, um, um, uh, Island of women, women, I think, um, Margaret, I think that's her name. That's probably my favorite. I think this is a fair place to put her. I don't really know at this point, honestly. Because, like, if she beat her, that would mean that she's equal to Boa Hancock in some degree. And I think she's definitely less than Boa Hancock. So, hey. Sanji, we're not doing Straw Hatch today. Ooh, Sengoku. I think Sengoku... Where'd he go? Sengoku is, um... <sighs> He's probably on the same level as Garp, realistically, but um, to me, it almost felt like he didn't really do much. Sure, he's in charge, so he's that character who doesn't have to do much. That being said, um, his power seemed like it was cool, and he barely used it at all towards the end of the war. So it's like, I think he could have done more. Then again, he is older. Then again, he is retiring. So maybe we can give him some credit for actually retiring, you know. But give him some credit for retiring. Why would he do that? Uh, actually, I've been talking for too long now. Let me see. An hour? Jesus Christ, dude. This is going to be a fucking upload and a half. Okay. Um, Sentomaru. Then tomorrow is again another one of those C characters that's like I think he's cool and the fact that he's able to use hockey shows that he has potential that being said he kind of has like this child mentality where he's like oh yeah my uncle oh yeah this and that it's like shut up dude like uh, we I think we'll see him again in the future and I think he'll be uh, probably maybe a more interesting character in that point in time that being said and the present time he kind of falls short for me if you guys like him better that's cool but uh, not for me Shaki uh, Shaki's cool uh, she's been shown to be um, an intelligent character which I can always appreciate uh, that being said does she rank equal to a lot of these characters I think she's she's B rank easy um yeah, but then, like, when I see her next to these characters, I'm like, has she really done that much? She's really just commentated. Uh, she was able to guess that Boa Hancock was in love with Luffy, which is um, which is cool, I guess. Shanks, ECS tier, uh, a member of the Yonku, um, one of the bigger inspirations for Luffy. Um, fair enough to put him next to Rayleigh, I think. Um, and... What can we say about Shanks? I feel like Shanks, even though he's been here since the beginning, we don't really know much about him. Like, I don't know if he has a devil fruit power. I don't know what the fuck he can do. Um, he's been present. He ended the war. We can give him that credit, you know. Um, 
he and um, um, Colby, for some reason, shared a similar kind of mentality in the way that they think about the um, needlessness of the war. And I think that's kind of cool. Um, but, like, well, like, well, like, we don't really know much about the guy, you know? Like, uh, he can use hockey. That's cool, you know? I think anybody in the top can, <laughs> to be honest. If, if not, they're so OP that they don't need it, maybe. Uh, it has been said that the admirals, uh, vice admirals and above can use hockey. So maybe everybody here can use hockey, but I, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's a conversation for another time. Sure, you. Ooh, one of the blacker pirates that we actually have some intel on. I think I'm willing to put him next to his brother. Um, yeah, I think that's fair. Um, again, he has been present in a number of scenarios. That being said, he hasn't really done too much. So it's like... When he took out the uh, communication system in and fell down, I thought that was kind of cool, but I don't think that puts him anywhere higher than Beecher, to be honest with you. Smoker. I think Smoker is cool as fuck, bro. Easy A for me. Um, we're on the A. Like, everybody here is fucking good. Probably better than Ivan Kava. Probably better than this guy. Maybe better than Eustace Kid. Maybe not. Yeah, I think that's a fair place to put him. Um, very cool power. A power of smoke. He can literally become anything he had luffy pinned down at that one moment it was good i think eh, you know and he also he will continue to be utilized as a character which is interesting because a lot of like the vice admirals and people of that rank you know we see him there and that we see them here and there but they don't really utilize him after that or they do so in like a very minimal way but smoker is literally being transferred to the new world in order for him to pursue his targets and I, you know Hey, he, he's fucking, he's out there, bro. He's living his best life, I, I hope. <laughs> um, what the fuck is this bitch's name? I do not know. Oh, I am so bad. Um, she's kind of cool, though. She's kind of clueless, right? Isn't that, like, her, her thing? Um, uh, I think she, again, she's one of those characters that's, like, Kind of similar to Kobe in the way that she seems like a pillar of light uh, change for the better in the Navy, potentially. But I don't know if that'll be the case. Um, Eurog, probably the least interesting. Actually, he has wings. He actually should be a lot more interesting. He comes from Skypea, doesn't he? If not an island in the sky where he could get some wings. So um, I think he's B. He, he'll, he'll be, like, similar to, like, Apu. Not really. Not better than Shaki, probably. Um, don't have to explore him further. Because he's been shown to, like, be, like, a physical threat to some degree. And he has, like, a big fucking thing. What is it? Like, I don't even know what it is. Like, something that he carries with him that he whacks people with, I think. Right? Right? Um. But, yeah. Um. I think it's interesting to have, like, a, a religious figure in this mess. Like, you know, you got a little bit of everything. You got the, the guy who does the black magic. He's here. The guy who does the religion. He's there. We've got... Everybody else is pretty... pretty not to do with any of that, so... <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know what I was going to say. This guy is a Blackbeard pirate. More info needed. I think he's kind of cool. Um, what was this guy's name? Oh, no. What was his name? Um, kind of cool. Probably not higher than B tier. Um, yep, I'll put him there. Mm, Beppo, I remember his fucking name. Beppo C tier. He's not that. He's not that interesting. He's not that powerful. He's cute, sure. We can get on that, but um, he's kind of corny with the way that he like constantly apologizes for shit. It's like, shut up, dude. Um, and we're here at the end. So now I'm kind of maybe I should do the straw hat pirates, but. Okay, we, we can, we can. Usopp, easy D. I kind of hate Usopp, to be honest with you. He, um... Uh, we'll do C. He's not that bad. He could be worse. He's he's grown over the years. Um, I'll take him in C. Zoro, I think they, like, none of them can really be placed above A tier, I think. Um, Brooke, we have the least amount of information on Brooke. I think Brooke could be, like, a B tier, maybe. Um, Chapa, he's kind of in the same boat as Usopp, to be honest with you, though, that being said, him being, uh, one of the first characters to use zone type devil fruits was, uh, a good introduction to zone type devil fruits, uh, 
and the diversity that they hold. I think Chopper was an incredible uh, way to showcase that. Frankie, I think he's cooler than Brooke, in my opinion. Um, Nami, one of the core five. I think she comes up to. Eh, you know, we'll put her in B. She's not that. She's not that great. <laughs> she's okay. Like, uh, and then Robin. Robin is really fucking cool. Actually, I think I like Robin. Uh, I almost wanted to put her in S tier, but I think that might be a little too generous. So when it comes to the Straw Hat crew, I think this is the way that I kind of think about them in, in order. Like Luffy's first, then Robin, then Zoro, then Sanji, then um, maybe then Nami. Like Nami's not bad. Then Frankie, then Brooke. Like the, the bottom four are kind of, or the bottom three are kind of eh, you know. But eh. Wow, we did it. Um... What do I say here? We're done. Oh, shit. That took so fucking long. Ah. So, yeah, I, I hope this gave you a, a, a better insight as to what it is I think about these characters. Some of them I think are cool. Like, clearly, anybody in S or A tier, um, uh, I think deserves praise to some regard. Uh, I think they are very fucking cool. I love how the show, even, um, how do I say this? Like, even though they have so many fucking characters... They still managed to make so many of them so compelling. I mean, sure, if we look down here, we kind of start to lo uh, lose that level of uh, compelling, you know, um, like these people, unfortunately, they're not that interesting. Her, we could make the case that she deserves to be up higher, but um, she's fucking annoying, so I'm going to leave her there. Um, these characters here are characters that I don't think we have enough information to be able to make a, a fair assessment of, and these bitches, actually, let me, let me. What am I doing? Can I delete this shit? There you go. Are they gone? Oh, <laughs> they disappeared? Okay, cool. Yeah, that's what I think about them. Fuck them. But yeah. Anybody up here? Pretty cool, dude. I gotta say. Very interesting. Um, Can I get a thumbnail here, actually? Oh, shit. Have I not been in all? Oh, come on. Tell me I was in the shower. Whatever. You guys can hear my voice. And you can see some of my face. I think it should be fine. Seems like that's going to be it. Let me know what you guys thought about my opinions on the characters that were featured in Marineford. If you have a different opinion of, uh, about these characters, make sure to leave it in the comment section below. Like always, conversation is always open in the comment section. So you want to talk about some of these characters? Do you think some of them deserve to be higher? Some of them deserve to be lower? What do you think? Do you think I kind of is a piece of shit trash that deserves to be an F tier? I would agree. That being said, he does have the power to talk his shit. So... He, he's a beater, bro. What can I say? Um, it's arguable. I, I think a lot of these are, are arguable points, uh, and I mentioned them in, when I was talking about them. But, um, yeah, let me know what you guys think, and I'm going to leave this one here because I'm tired of fucking talking. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.